Hey guys, happy Monday to everybody. Hopefully you're having a great start to your work week um, or week if you're not working. Lucky you if you're not. Uh, I wanted to make this video for quite a while. I've been kind of compiling um, a list of questions that are regularly asked over a period of time, whether it be majority of them come from my silicone series playlist. And uh, a lot of times I will answer the question in the comments, but I also wanted to address them in a video because lately there's been quite a few topics rolling around that I think are important to chat about. And I think uh, a lot of people are afraid to talk about some of these questions and or uh, issues or just information that can be viewed as I don't know, I guess sensitive, but I don't find it to be sensitive. I think it's important to be informed. And so I figure while we're doing that, um, I'm not going to fully undress her. I'm going to leave her in this, but I'm going to show you how I powder her because a lot of the questions that I have gotten have been around the powdering of silicone dolls. Um, and so I will share with you how I go about powdering because apparently not everybody powders their dolls the same. And I get a lot of questions about that. Uh, so I figured this is a good way to show you um, as well as answer some of those questions. But also, I have, since I haven't powdered her in a really long time, um, I can just powder her, her limbs while she's got her limbs out because I don't want to change her out of this beautiful little outfit. I love it so much. So, um, and I will be, this is going to be a frank, very open conversation or discussion about how I feel about different things. And these are going to be, of course, my opinions, which every collector has their own thoughts and opinions on all of these varying topics and questions I'm going to answer. I'm just sharing with you my thoughts uh, based on what artists have shared with me or told me over the years and or my personal experience with silicone. And these questions are all relating to silicone dolls. Um, not relating to vinyl reborns. So just to clarify that. So, and I will, and I will be happy to talk about the things that nobody wants to say. <laughs> I'm not afraid to say them because I feel like honest discussions, whether it's what someone wants to hear or not, need to be sometimes put out there. Good information is lacking in the reborn hobby. I think surrounding silicones, there's a lot of misinformation that goes around just like with anything else people you know put out information that they're not 100% sure about and then it becomes you know what people are doing and in the end it's misinformation you know it just happens it's just that it, it happens in every hobby right um so I like to try to put out really good information that will be helpful whether or not you are an avid silicone collector and have been collecting for years and just might not know about this some of this information or if you're new coming into just now um you know buying silicone or you're thinking about investing in your first silicone dowel this is all going to be good information for you to know so let's get into it i have i printed some of the questions that, well i printed a whole bunch of questions out i don't know if i'll get to all of them but i will do my best because I am working today and I just wanted to um, take a break uh, for lunch and make this video. And so here we are. Okay, so question, how often should I powder my silicone doll? And what powder do you recommend? And also, why do you wear a mask when you powder your doll? Is the powder not safe? That's a very good question. <laughs> I do wear a mask every time I powder. I Whenever I do any type of powdering, even if it's just a light powdering or just like a spot that I just want to powder, which I don't powder. This doll does not require powdering. However, I find it to be a little bit cathartic. You know, there's, there's some like relaxation to it. And, you know, occasionally I just powder her just to powder her. <laughs> it certainly will not hurt her. Um, but with Claire Taylor dolls specifically, they don't need to be powdered. Um, I don't know whether it's a different type of matting powder that she uses that is, you know, stays for as long as it does. She never feels tacky or sticky. Um, 
how often you should powder your doll is going to be dependent on what type of silicone the doll is made from, how well matted the silicone is. The first sign of a doll needing to be powdered is that they feel tacky or not. Some will really feel sticky to the touch, but when they start to feel like they could start to feel almost getting to the point of sticky, um, it's a tacky feeling, I guess, is, is the best way I can describe it. Monroe never feels tacky to me, um, but previous dolls that I've had by other artists have. And I've had downright sticky um, silicone dolls in the past. Um, but really, uh, it, it varies. It's not, it's not just a one answer to the question. It, it's going to depend on your doll and how well matted it is. Also, if you start to see shiny spots, um, that's a sign that, well... We'll get into that a little bit deeper, but you'll want to powder any shiny spots. That's that's a sign that there's potentially a problem with the matting on the doll. If you're getting a lot of shiny spots, I, I do a thorough inspection of Monroe um, a handful of times a year because I want to make sure that one, you know, I, I notice any potential shiny areas where the matting could have rubbed off, especially in the highly handled areas on her body, her hands tend to be my biggest concern because we put so many things over their hands when we're putting clothes on them or taking clothes off of them. Monroe does have a slight shiny spot on this thumb here. It's ever so slight. And I mean, to me, I mean, some people might not call that a shiny spot, um, but it is an area that I, I look at all the time to make sure that I keep track of it, that you know, if the matting fully comes off of it, it'll become shiny, shiny. And then you have to worry about the paint also coming off. Um, but that's why I'm a huge, huge um, advocate of doing inspections of your doll, of your silicone dolls thoroughly, regularly. Uh, I, I generally look her over pretty, pretty closely when I change her. Even when I'm on camera changing her, I'm still looking her over. I've actually stopped and started because I thought I something caught my eye mid mid video midway through my video making a video um, and then had to kind of resume because you know either it wasn't anything because I've been very very fortunate with this doll that she doesn't have matting issues like I, I don't know what it's it's many years I'm guessing of of uh, matting dolls making dolls but Claire Claire Taylor's matting is is very. It's very hardy, I guess you could say, because it doesn't tend to be problematic. Whereas I know that I've gotten silicone dolls directly from an artist brand new with shiny spots, with matting issues right from the giddy up, um, which is very concerning. So yeah, uh, depending on the, the silicone, how well the doll's matted is how often you're going to want to powder your doll. Um, the powder that I recommend, I actually like a lot of the powders that are out. I think that there are many choices. I do not recommend anybody using any powder that is not it meant for a silicone doll. So we don't do, we don't do, I don't recommend this because it's not, if they says pure cornstarch, but it's not got additives in there. It's got aloe, it's got vitamin E, it's got things added to it. So just to be on the safe side, I recommend using, if you're going to, if you're going to powder your doll, use a brand that's meant for silicone dolls. So I've got this one, which is sold by Wee Baby Nurseries. Wee Baby Nursery. I've also got Claire Taylor's powder. Um, I've tried D3 Creations powder. I had a little teeny tiny one of that. Um, and I've like this one I've settled on because I, I got it in a large container. And so I hardly ever use it. So it has lasted forever. <laughs> um, a little goes a long way. And why do I wear a mask when I powder my doll? So someone, a, a video quite a while ago that I shared that I was putting a mask on so you could hear the difference in my voice so I'd sound funny talking through a mask. Yes, I use what I would put on for, you know, what we've all, we all are used to seeing these. It's a Can95 mask. The reason why I wear it when I powder my doll is that, no, if you breathe in the powder, it is not safe. <laughs> I mean, it's, 
it's safe if you're lightly, gently putting it on your doll, but the moment it becomes airborne and you in, you inhale it, it is not good for your lungs. Um, no powder is good for your lungs, but powder is meant to absorb moisture. So if you inhale it and you have it in your lungs, it can make you very, very sick. So I highly recommend wearing a mask when you powder your doll. Um, next question is kind of part of this. And I don't even know if I'm going to get to powder on here, but I want to answer questions first and we'll kind of go with it because I don't want to talk through a mask if I don't have to have, if I don't have to. Um, but why, the next question is, why does my brand new doll have shiny patches? This can happen to any brand new doll. <laughs> I, it's happened to me. It, it's just, it's unfortunate that some brand new dolls come home with shiny spots. So matting is a real tricky thing. And I've talked to many artists about the matting process and majority of them say that that's the least liked part of making a doll because the matting can make or break the doll. It can, it can go smooth and it'll be great or it can totally ruin the look of a doll if it's not done right or if something goes wrong. Silicone is a temperamental medium. I've been told that also by many, many artists. Everyone that handles uh, silicone says that it's temperamental. Um, you can do the same thing over and over again and end up with a different result uh, based on one very minor, you know, change that maybe you weren't aware of. So, you know, knowing how to use the product, knowing how to paint it, knowing how to seal it properly, all of that is, you know, it's based on years of experience. And I think that um, it takes some artists a while to perfect it, so to speak. But I don't even know if every artist or any artist out there is perfect at this process. Silicone is not the most hardy, easy medium to work with. And that's part of why there's so many varying thoughts and discussions going on about how to care for it, how to protect it, what's safe for it, what's not safe for it. Um, but generally, when you receive a doll that has shiny spots, it could have a problem with the matting right off the bat. Or it just could be that the matting didn't stick in a couple of spots. It's hard to get all the, the cracks and crevices to have perfect matting. So an unmatted silicone doll is shiny. If you've ever watched work in progress pictures of you know artists painting silicone, it's very shiny. Looks shiny, looks sticky, looks all sorts of shine, <laughs> tons of shine. And when they're done painting it and it's sealed and it's ready to be finished, they put the matting over it. And there are different processes. I know artists use different types of matting powders, but that's what gives them the, the skin-like non-shiny end result that you see in front of you. You know, she's not shiny. She just looks like she has skin. Um, so if you do receive a doll that does come and it has a bunch of sticky or sticky, shiny patches on it, you may want to reach out to the artist and let them know just to make sure if, if, the, if they get worse that the artist is willing to take the doll back and remat the doll if necessary. Um, and if not, then it just might be that the doll has a couple of shiny spots. Um, if I receive a doll that has shiny spots, I send it back and I would, I would expect the artist to fix that, that issue. Um, will I need to keep getting my doll rematted? No, it's not a process that you should have to do over and over again. Um, if it's done properly the first time, you should only have to mat the doll once. However, that being said, a lot of silicone dolls are being purchased so that they can be treated like living newborn babies and people are handling them every day like a living baby, um, putting things in and out of their mouth on a regular basis also creates wear and tear. Um, just normal wear and tear if it's excessive, excessive handling or rough handling can result in the doll losing matting and or losing uh, the paint eventually. Uh, so, you know, if the doll is cared for properly and is gently handled and gently loved and not bathed, the doll should not need to be rematted. Most artists, unless it 
arrive to you with a problem, we'll not just remat a doll for you. It's a service that I'm sure um, some artists definitely provide, but most really busy, well-known artists will, they don't have time to remat and fix, you know, their older dolls. They just don't. Um, Claire used to fix her older dolls, but now if you're the original owner, that's the only time I think she'll actually take the doll back and make a repair because she's too busy doing other things. And, uh, repairs are much more time consuming than making a new doll. Okay. This next question is this huge topic of <laughs> discussion that just keeps circling around and many people have their thoughts and their ideas and feelings about it. I definitely have mine. And that is, is it safe to bathe my silicone doll? My answer is no. Why is my answer no? Because I've seen what bathing a silicone doll does to silicone dolls painting and matting over time. I'm not saying that every doll that's ever been bathed has paint and matting issues. I think that there are some really well done dolls out there that have, that, you know, have been bathed, but it was very lightly rinsed with water type of thing. And it's not done regularly. And the owners have not found that there to be any problems. They've been lucky, I think, in my opinion. Um, how I look at it, and this comes directly from information received from artists, is that when you see an artist rinsing off a doll, like showing a doll underwater or they look like they're bathing the doll or whatever, the artist can do whatever the artist wants to do. There are a lot of times artists need to rinse the doll before they're either applying matting or other things, but that's the artist. The artist knows what the doll can do, can't do, but for a collector to think that it's normal to or safe to regularly bathe your baby doll, your silicone baby doll, well, you're just asking for trouble. So I'm going to give it to you in the easiest terms and the easiest uh, way to explain why I think it's not good is that if you get your your doll wet and submerge it for any period of time and you have a matting issue anywhere on the doll and you might not be aware of it. The matting is what protects the paint. So it seals off the paint and keeps that layer of protection there. So if you have a matting anywhere where there's lacking matting, water will get in between that layer. And if you have a paint issue anywhere and you won't necessarily know it because you won't be able to recognize necessarily if it's in a weird spot and you submerge the dowel, then what happens is water gets underneath between the silicone and the paint. And what it does is it lifts it. And you, what you get is you start to get peeling. And what most collectors don't understand is once a dowel starts peeling, there's no fix. It just continues to peel because it's just lifted, lifted, and it just continues with wear, with holding, with putting clothes on taking clothes off, handling, it just continues to come off. Now, I had a question <laughs> in relation to this is, well, why can't they just fix that? Well, I'm guessing they would be the artist, but it's not that simple. So a silicone dowel isn't like a vinyl dowel where you can just <laughs> wipe it clean, clean slate, like you can, Take a Vinyl Reborn and you can remove all of the paint, all of anything that's been put on it and start over again. With a silicone dowel, you can't do that. A silicone dowel, if you're trying to remove paint and even it out, requires sanding. Because for most of the spots that haven't lifted, it, it does become one with the silicone, the paint. And so to remove it and to start with a blank canvas again, you'd have to sand it off, which takes hours and hours majority of artists will not even touch a doll that's been knowingly bathed with paint peeling and issues like that because it's just way too time consuming and it never looks right. And if you take sandpaper to anything soft, a soft medium such as this, it's never even. You get divots, you get rough spots. It just never looks right. It's not worth it. So in my opinion, it's not good to ever bathe your doll. I don't recommend it. And I've always said to people, I'm like, would you take a painting off your wall, fill the, uh, a bathtub with water and submerge that painting, that piece of artwork and submerge it in a, in a tub of water and bathe it? 
No. You have to remember at the end of the day that these dolls are works of art. They are still works of art. They're painted surfaces. So if you, you know, approach that in the way that you think of a doll, yes, we hug them, we love them, we change them, we, you know, we do things with them, we role play with them, but you have to remember to handle with care. They're delicate and should be treated with care, like you would a piece of artwork. And if you apply that logic to it, it does make a little bit more sense. Now, I know that some people will respond to this <laughs> saying, it's my doll, I can do whatever I want with it. You are absolutely 100% correct. These are my opinions. I'm offering up my opinions because people have asked for them. So that's why I'm giving you my thoughts on it. And yes, it's your doll. You can do whatever you want with it because it is your doll. It's your investment. But should you ever go to sell that doll and you've bathed it time and time again and potentially caused issues, you're selling on your issues to another collector, which that has happened to me multiple times. That's why I feel the way I feel about it. Most collectors don't disclose that they've bathed their doll. When you go to buy a doll in the secondary market and you don't know the history of the doll, you're basically taking a chance that someone at some point in time has potentially bathed the doll and caused issues that may not arise immediately. They may, it may take a while for them to show up, but you will have just either given away the problems to somebody else unknowingly and someone else buys your problems. That's to me, that's not a sound investment. Um, so no, I, I get that people want to do what they want with their dolls, but if you have any thought that you may sell a doll in the future, which most of us do, in order to, to, you know, get a better doll or what have you. If you ever think you're going to sell it, you shouldn't bathe it. And if you did bathe it and you'd go to sell it, you better disclose it so someone knows what they're buying. Okay, I'll step off my soapbox now about that. Um, let's see, if it's not recommended to bathe silicone dolls, then why do artists do it? I think I already covered that. They also do it because it's... Um, it's the realism. It's why everybody wants to buy a doll and bathe it. It's the same reason why artists will show them bathing it prior to rooting. Or, I mean, I see a lot of, I see a lot of artists doing that before they mat the doll. Um, but yeah, it's for realism. Uh, but majority of artists don't recommend it. Uh, let's see. Oh, can silicone get stretched out? Yes. <laughs> um, I've seen numerous artists do this where they take a piece of silicone, an arm of a doll or an arm or a, a limb that they might be practicing on or just maybe they, they poured it just so they can show this. But they, a, an artist or a silicone pouring company, I've seen multiple videos where they take an arm or a leg and they stretch it so they can show like the limits of the silicone, the durability of the silicone but it's nothing you want to be doing with your doll. Like when you're clothing your doll, we always talk about not pulling the limbs through, but you know, pushing the limbs through from like the elbow up and that sort of thing. And you don't ever want to just tug on fingers because they can tear and you can pull them off. I've seen people do them accidentally, never on purpose, but this is soft silicone. You know, the softer the silicone, the more likely it is going to stretch and rip. Um, so yes, uh, it can get stretched out. A lot of um, people, when they're constantly putting pacifiers and bottles in the doll's mouth and opening it all the time, or they leave, you know, pacifiers in the doll's mouth, yes, the mouth can get stretched open and stretched out. Um, so be aware of that. Yes, it, it's it's stretchy, you know, and, and a lot of constant pulling can stretch them out. Uh, let's see. How easy is it to damage a silicone doll? So this is where um, a lot of people don't like to hear this because I, I know a lot of, you know, pourers want you to think that this is the most durable thing and they do the stretching videos where they take a piece of the silicone and stretch it to the max. First off, <laughs> the silicone has been painted. So there are chemicals involved um, and then it's been matted and then we clothe them and we do things with them. And over time, there's wear and tear that happens. So it's it's actually, silicone as a medium is a very delicate medium, in my opinion. But it's also durable when treated and handled with care. And that's, that's just the key, is 
you have to be respectful when you're handling it. If you handle it roughly or excessively and you're bathing it all the time and you're just doing so many things with it, yes, the likelihood is that you could do damage to it. How easy is it is, is it to tear? Um, it depends on what, it, you know, circumstances are. I don't think any of us ever intend to damage our dolls. We, we never set out for that to happen, but damage occurs depending on, you know, what you're doing with it and how often. Um, I mentioned, you know, stretching out the mouth because people are constantly putting pacifiers in their mouths and feeding the dolls and simulating feeding, bottle feeding a doll. Um, I I know that even the best silicone can tear, especially in the corners of the mouth. I always talk about this when I do like an inspection and talk about, you know, the the points on a doll that are problem areas that tend to be a higher probability that they could tear, like inside the arms, at the elbow crease, under the armpits, the neck, the mouth, the ears where they attach, you know, in between the toes, in between the fingers. Like there are definite spots on the doll that will get more wear and tear just from simply clothing them. Like if they have open fingers, you guys always see me put gloves or hand mitts over her hands when I dress her because I don't want to constantly be pulling on and rubbing things across as I'm clothing her. You know, it's also what can eventually take the matting off. So that's why I always put little hand mitts on her when I'm when I'm dressing her. It's just protection. But overall, if handled with care, you know, you're looking at a five year old silicone doll that I've I've loved for a long period of time. I've dressed her time and time again, but she's never been bathed. And I've always been very gentle in the way that I handle her. So therefore, she has lasted beautifully. She has a full head of hair. A lot of dolls that are, you know, and a lot of silicone dolls lose hair because people are constantly brushing their hair. You'll see me kind of pat it down, but I don't generally brush it. She doesn't need to have her hair brushed. But that's something else you have to be aware of. You know, it cannot be sealed in a silicone head. It's a solid head. So therefore, you have to be careful when you're brushing through a silicone doll's head of hair so that you're not pulling it out and it's losing hair constantly. It's just kind of applying a little bit of common sense to, you know, a huggable piece of artwork. Um, if you handle them carefully, you get to still love them. People are like, how can you enjoy a doll if you're so afraid you're going to damage her? Well, I, I'm not afraid of damaging her. I'm just careful with her. And I make sure that I always wash my hands before I handle her so nothing is on my hands that can transfer. You know, if I'm going to hold her and she doesn't clothe, I make sure that my arms don't have like lotion on them or I put, you know, a long sleeve shirt on so that I'm not putting my oils and or lotions and things that could react with her. Common sense. There are just think in the terms of being cautious, but you still get to enjoy your doll and it still lasts because I want her to last a lifetime if, if that's possible. Um, so yeah, they can be damaged, but with being gentle and being careful, they won't get damaged. They'll last and stand the test of time, you know, five years of loving this baby. And, and I, when I say loving her, I have thoroughly enjoyed her. I take her places. I, t I change her clothes regularly. I don't powder her hardly at all. <laughs> you know, she's, she's in beautiful condition. Um, but every doll is different as well. You have to take into consideration, um, you know, prior history with the doll. Like I got her, she was only a couple weeks old and her first mommy only had her for a couple weeks and she was brand new and she was never bathed or anything like that. So, and I've just known her care and taken great, really great care of her, um, over the last five years. So you just apply common sense. I say that over and over again. You just have to be gentle and aware of what you do with your doll. Um, Claire always puts on her uh, instructions and care and safety and all that of when they, she gets, or when she sends out a new doll. It says, if you, if you treat and handle the baby as you would a newborn baby and gently and with care, then you're good. And I think that's great advice, minus the bathing. <laughs> I think that's the only thing that I would strongly not recommend. Okay. Um, oh, this one's a good one. Is it a good investment to buy a silicone doll over a vinyl doll and which one lasts longer? 
honestly. I don't know which one would last longer. That's my honest answer. I don't know the answer to that question because I haven't, I think it depends. <laughs> I think it's an apples and oranges thing. Um, but do I think it's a good investment to buy a silicone dowel over a vinyl dowel? I think that that is a personal choice that each collector has to make for themselves. I know some collectors, longtime collectors, I swear they'll never, ever don't want anything to do with silicone. They don't like the feel of it. They don't like the care involved, the fact that it's more delicate and they're limited. They just will never, ever own a silicone. They don't care. And I, and I love that they know themselves. <laughs> But then you have some collectors that start off like me who never at first didn't like the idea of having to care for a silicone doll and that there you would have to, you know, there's maintenance involved or you'd have to powder it regularly or any of that. Um, I also started off with that. Eh, I don't know if I want to get involved in that either. But over time, the realism is really, you know, if you want the full package and the full experience of a super realistic in the way they hold, the way that you hold them, the way they feel, just the way they move, silicone is where it's at. And so I would say 100% for me, my investment is best in a silicone dowel because that's what I know I'm going to enjoy 1000% the most. Um, hands down, there's nothing like you know, the, the feel of a silicone baby in comparison to a vinyl reborn. For me, vinyl reborns are more, they're beautiful to look at. And not that silicones aren't beautiful to look at because she's beautiful to look at, but I want to interact with her. I want to hold her. I want to do more with her that's interactive than I would when I had Lola. Lola, I rarely ever held her, ever. I might have held her maybe a couple of times, to be honest with you. Um, but my go-to is always to pick up Monroe if I'm going to hold the doll because she feels the most real. Um, vinyl doesn't warm up and feel like a living baby like silicone does when you've held them for a period of time. The silicone becomes the same temperature. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Um, there's just nothing like it if you want the full experience and interaction, um, of a, you know, what a living newborn would feel like, um, silicone is where it's at for me. So I would say 100%, it's a good investment to buy a silicone doll. I think that silicone, not all, but most silicone retain their value longer than a vinyl doll. Even, even if it's, um, a really well done vinyl, most collectors are more willing are, are willing to spend more money on a silicone versus a vinyl, hands down. That that the market tells us. So yeah. Um, why are there so many varying opinions about the care of silicone dolls in the hobby? That I sort of already talked about that, but I'll I'll say it again. Um, I think that those of us that are making videos talking about the care of silicone, um, I think. Most people that are making these videos go into it with great intentions, but they might be newer to collecting and they haven't experienced it all yet. Um, I have learned a lot of the information about silicone, especially uh, the hard way, <laughs> the hard way. I've experienced um, some not so great experiences early on. Um, directly from artists. I've had friends that have endured some really awful things that have happened to the, their silicone dolls. I've heard a lot of feedback directly from artists that were willing to share it at the time. Um, and I think ultimately that the, again, I go back to this on a lot of things, is that the doll hobby community has grown so much over the years that, and, and the number of YouTube creators that are doll collectors that are putting information out there is also greater. There are so many reborn channels now talking about silicone, talking about their experiences. That's why you get so many varying opinions. It's like with any other hobby, there's always going to be like varying opinions and everybody has their own opinion and that's okay. But I always err on the side of caution when it concerns silicone and anything that I've invested my money in. That's just how I approach things because I wanna protect my investment. One, because it's an investment, it's a lot of money, but two, because I want the doll to last. So I have to apply, you know, good 
ways to protect the doll while enjoying the doll. I have to apply common sense to how I go about my collecting and what I put my money into because these are expensive works of art. They're cute, they're adorable, they're great, we wanna interact with them, but they're still an investment of a lot of money and I wanna protect my investment, but I also, I enjoy her so much, I don't want anything to happen to her. So I am very cautious and I try to share my thoughts because this doll is, is you know, proof is in the pudding, as they say. That's a, that's a saying that a lot of people say. She is proof that you can thoroughly enjoy a doll for five years. Five years of solid enjoying, changing, handling, caring for. And she is perfect, you guys. Like I said, she's got like, and I can't even see it right now. But there's like a teeny tiny spot where it just catches the light just so and it's a little like a little teeny tiny shiny spot other than that she's got no tears no rips no problems she's intact she's beautiful she has all of her hair she's just she's as perfect as the day I got her and I'm, for that I'm grateful you know a big part of that probably is the fact that Claire Taylor is Claire Taylor and she's she was made by one of the top artists that helps yes but it's also in the care of the doll I've seen Beautiful Claire Taylor dolls wrecked because they weren't they weren't cared for properly. So even the best made, well made dolls by the best artists can be ruined if they're not cared for properly. So I think it's you know her withstanding all of my love and affection over the five years and looking perfect is a testament to you know if you care for your doll and you're gentle and you're thoughtful about the things you do, the doll will last. I hope she lasts another five years. I hope she's with me another five years, honestly. That would make me so happy. You know, that's what I can hope for. But I'm going to continue to care for her in the way that I know how and make sure that I'm doing everything in my power to make sure she stays intact, right? That's the goal. So that being said, we're 37 minutes in. So this is a long video and I'm going to We'll end it here, but I will show you real quick. I'm going to put a mask on real quick. So now I'm going to be talking through a mask, but my way of powdering, I'll just, I'll just show you real quick. I use, this is specifically for powder and powder only, this diaper. It's just a basic cloth diaper. You can use anything, any cloth. But what I do is I will lay this out. I wouldn't put it here, but just for purposes of showing you in the camera. And I take this, tip it upside down, and it brings some to the surface. And what I do is I gently tap it onto a diaper. Not a lot, because not a lot is needed. And make sure you seal this up immediately. Don't leave the top off of it, because if you spill it and it goes everywhere and you inhale it, very bad, very bad. You don't want to excessively powder. The key is, so I put it on this because it helps, it contains the powder. The powder sits on the, on the diaper. And then I have my, my brush. A good brush is good to invest in. But I just put enough on there so that you can kind of see there's some on there. Directly powdering the doll I'm not a fan of because you get too much on the doll. They get literally a layer of white that you don't want. That's not realistic. That's not what a baby's skin looks like and you shouldn't have to put very much on. And then I gently just dab, dab, dab. Brushing or taking your hands and rubbing is very bad for it. You're going to cause friction and you don't want to do that because you can actually damage the paint that way. Dabbing is all you should need to do. Dabbing lightly. And you'll see that there's no cloud of white over her. And the idea is, is you don't want an excessive amount. It should be light. You'll feel it, but just a light dab. That's all I do. I rarely ever would put any on her face. It doesn't need it. It also isn't realistic because she's got shine, meant to have shine. Um, she's got gloss on her lips, inside her nose, and around her eyes. So you don't want to get powder in the eyes. You don't want it to get in places where you have to wet it and wipe it out. 
but I will also say that when you powder your dowel, it's also the best way to actually find issues because when you add powder, it kind of points out any rough spots or not smooth spots that like you could say. So it's a good way, like a lot of times I'll, I'll powder her and then inspect her if I'm doing a thorough inspection because it'll, it'll make it easier to find potential issues. But you'll see that it's just a light, you shouldn't see a pile of powder. You shouldn't be dumping the powder on the doll. Put the powder on a surface and then dab, the, dab your brush onto that surface so that you're not excessively dousing the doll. But it also makes it safer for you not to inhale it. Because like I said, I can't state this enough. Inhaling powder is very, very bad for you. I don't know why they don't put warning labels on the containers of powder. Because it's just, it's so bad for your lungs. So yeah, she doesn't need powder. But it does make her feel silky smooth. She felt silky smooth before. But it is nice to put a layer of powder on. Um, especially if you're putting like winter clothes on them. I think that that's an extra layer when you're pulling clothes on and off of them or putting tights on them or stuff like that. But then this goes in the drawer with this, it gets put away. And then I actually don't take the mask off because anything could be airborne still. So I just leave the mask on and then I'll let the dust settle, so to speak but it's just better protection for your lungs. Rather be safe than sorry, but she is powdered. And you shouldn't see a big change in color of the silicone <laughs> because if you did, that means you've probably put too much on, but it shouldn't be a cloud that explodes when you're, you know, when you're powdering a doll, it shouldn't be this huge cloud of powder everywhere when you're dabbing them. Um, then you've got too much, <laughs> too much. And I think it takes time to figure out like how to powder your dial without, you know, being excessive because a lot of people are new to it, but yeah, just easier. Just put a mask on. I can't state that enough. I think that it's so um, important that people should protect their lungs, but yeah, there she is guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing the answers to the questions. And I want to state that nothing that I am saying is meant to offend anybody. If you have varying opinions, that's okay. And you don't, you, you differ from my thoughts and opinions. That's okay too. We're all entitled to feel how we feel. I'm just sharing with you, um, my thoughts, my feelings, and my recommendations, um, from what I've learned over the years. So yeah. And there's Monroe still in her beautiful little sunsuit and it is gorgeous outside. It's like 75 degrees here. A little more cloudy today, but we still have beautiful weather. So I'm very, very thrilled for that. So anyways, guys, I hope you have a great start to your week. And um, yeah, you'll see us very, very soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.